Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me with a Hyundai Ioniq 5 with some cold freezing temperatures outside because we are talking about battery preconditioning. This car just received a software update to allow for battery preconditioning on the way to a charger, but there's so many caveats, so many weird things, and I think they did a pretty bad job of implementing all of it. So it's like, great idea a year after start of production on such a technically advanced car. And I thought I'd share to you what's going on in the world of Hyundai. It's been a little while since I've driven an Ionic 5. Let's go try out the preconditioning and I'll tell you how it works and you'll probably be just as annoyed and frustrated as I am because what the heck is going on here? Here it is, a Ionic 5 SEL all-wheel drive. Now, it's really important to note that this battery preconditioning update, I believe, is standard equipment for 2023 models. This particular one is my friend Zach's car. You guys have seen him make videos with this before. I swapped him my Rivian for the day to try this out. His is an all-wheel drive model, which is great because there is a technical service bulletin, a TSB, for specifically all-wheel drive Ionic 5s. It's not available for rear-wheel drives to unlock battery preconditioning. And the whole idea here is, for those of you who are not aware, batteries don't like to charge when they're cold. And they really don't like to charge fast when they're even moderately cold. So the new software update should bring the battery pack temperature to a target of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 20, 21 degrees Celsius. Um, and of course, you're gonna, you're gonna need different temperatures throughout the state of charge range. I'll talk about it a little bit in the video, um, you know, of target preconditioning temperature. I think this is pretty rudimentary. And just to start us off, the one thing Zach had to do was he had to call up his local Hyundai dealer, schedule a service appointment to get an update to allow for this. And it also bricked the car in another way. Let me tell you about you it. You join me inside the Ionic 5 now, and I just love this car. There's no hiding it, right? I gave this a rave review when I drove it the first time, and all of those points still stand. It is truly one of the best electric cars on the market, and with the new N version coming down the line, I'm actually eyeing it to get maybe the spicy Ionic 5 for myself. But this new update, when you go into eco mode, totally bricks the car. It has no performance in eco mode. Um, like, I guess I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Throw the seatbelt on real quick so it doesn't ding at us and I don't go flying through the windshield. But I'm just going to do a launch <laughs> in eco mode. So this is a, an update that he had to bring to the dealer. It shouldn't affect eco mode at all, but um, I believe we have it in eco normal sport. We're not in eye pedal. Just going to floor it. Ready? Floored. 10... 15, 20 miles an hour, whoa, 30 miles an hour. It's like, what is going on here? And so eco mode has never been fast in Ionic 5 because it actually uh, disconnects the front motor and you basically get the same performance as a rear wheel drive Ionic 5. Great turning radius in this car. Um, but in this update, it it's really, look at that, floored, barely moving, crazy. It's like uh, it's got all the lag in the world. So I think they really need to fix that. And I know Hyundai is aware of it and uh, I know they're working on a fix. So if you have an Ionic 5, you may want to wait to bring it into the dealer to get this preconditioning update before you, uh, <laughs> if you use eco mode a lot. Eco mode is nice because it, again, disconnects the front motor. You get more range on the highway. You don't have the flux related losses of the permanent magnet motor on the front. Um, but if you run normal mode and not in eye pedal, it still is rear wheel drive unless you go hard throttle. So I would say for me, I'd go in and get the update and then you have to go in again to get another update. So I guess the the weird thing to me is it's 2023 right now. Uh, this car is is future built, uh, you know, sort of built for the future. It's an 800 volt system architecture, one of the best drivetrains on the market, with some of the best build quality, driving dynamics, you name it. Ionic 5 rocks, but they couldn't figure out how to do over the air software updates. Now I attended this very long presentation about how they're doing it next year but it's now, and this is what owners of the cars we recommended to buy are dealing with, which is having to schedule an appointment to get a small update. Meanwhile, 
I think the amount of time it takes me to make this video, my Rivian, my Tesla, they're getting software updates as we speak. <laughs> Just crazy. So, um, you know, let's move past that. Uh, I also want to say I learned a lot about this preconditioning update from a friend of mine. He's a YouTuber and uh, he's called The Ionic Guy. I'll leave a link to his channel below. He makes great Ionic 5 related content and really just across eGMP in general, EV6, GV60, it all applies because they're platform shared cars. Really fantastic channel. Great to see the success to him and uh, highly recommend if you own one of these cars or are interested to check that out. But at least in this video, I wanna show you how to activate preconditioning. I've pulled up all the nerdy data, of course. We're gonna see what the target battery inlet temperature is. That's what it's gonna try and heat the cells to. Talk about some of the weird things that uh, you need to know when preconditioning your Ionic 5. So let's do it. We're about to get dumped on with like a foot of snow. But before that happens, let's go charge this thing. What I'm gonna do is actually go find the Electrify America station on the map and select it. I know there's some weird, so we're here in Fort Collins and the EA station's right off this road, right over here. Um, not a very smooth system. You also have to zoom way in. There it is, that little green blob right there. We gotta like kinda line it up-ish. There we go, and then it snaps. And you'll see Target, Electrify America, available, set destination. And so what we've done is we've told the car, hey, that's where we want to go. It found its way there. It's only 13 minutes away and selected. Now over here, you'll still see a lightning bolt indication. And that means that we are not preconditioning. That is the standard light. What we're looking for is a snowflake to pop up. And that means it will precondition the battery pack. And it does take a while for the snowflake to pop up. It also pops up a message that says it'll precondition the, uh, the high voltage battery pack. You'll see here our battery minimum temperature is six degrees Celsius. Our maximum temperature is nine. Batteries are huge. There's lots of bricks in between. And basically there's always gonna be some thermal fluctuations across the whole thing. Especially with Ionic 5, this car has a really hard time of actually regulating the temperature across the whole pack. I notice it a lot with um, sort of uh, hot weather situations where you overheat the battery pack. But um, we're waiting for this little snowflake to kick on right now. Our coldest part of the battery pack is what's going to limit our DC fast charging speed. My understanding is right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 or 21 degrees um, uh, Celsius. As soon as that hits there, then we're going to be able to unlock full speed. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the drive over. But here we go. Battery conditioning activated for optimal DC fast charging. Snowflake is on. Our battery inlet temperature is currently, currently 2 degrees Celsius. I imagine that's going to increase um, beyond 20 or 30 degrees Celsius. It's going to run the heater and we'll see how uh, it does. I heard this should use about, see coolant's already heating up over there. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Nice. Um, I heard this should use about uh, five-ish kilowatts or so to heat up the battery pack, but things are already happening right there. Finally, that's awesome. So you have a little bit of that delay when you select the station. And I know there's like, if you have something in your recents, it may not go. So you may want to you know, select the station fresh every time. I also just want to mention there's still no route planning in this car, which is crazy. Um, and again, no, no battery preconditioning automatically. You have to go in and use the native in-car map system. You can't use Apple CarPlay to select this or anything like that. So it's a pretty rudimentary version. What I actually think would be ideal is to have a manual precondition button to say, hey, boom, get me to 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the reason a lot of automakers don't like to do that is because you want a different arrival temperature based off of your state of charge and based off of the station power. But I'm pretty sure this is just a dumb system that just goes 20 degrees Celsius. And so, you know, let's just give us a manual option if that's the case. Of course, you're going to burn a little bit more energy on the way to the charger, but that's going to be the case. So let's throw it in gear. Let's head to EA and let's see what happens along the way. Um, I love driving Ionic 5. Great driver assistance. So quiet. It, this car just, man, it's been a little bit too long since I've been in it a few months and really reminds me just how good of a car the Koreans are building these days. Just some of the best on the planet, really. And um, what's interesting is if you get below 20% state of charge, it will actually shut off preconditioning, which is way too high. I mean, Hyundai even uh, advertises a 10 to 80% charging limit. It, they really need to do better here. This is really rudimentary preconditioning. The car should have shipped with at least this. I'm crazy that you have to go in for a, a dealer over the air for it. It really should have shipped with at least this. Thank you so much for letting me out. 
and um, just pulling out into traffic here. Am I in eco mode? Because I'm floored. There we go. Normal. Whoa! I was like wide open throttle the whole time. Thing couldn't get out of its own way. It's dangerously slow. That was crazy. So don't use eco mode if you get the update. Um, so let's just run through the parameters really quick. I think you need to be within 30 miles of a DC fast charger, which may not be enough distance to actively heat up the battery pack high enough. So that's a bit of a shame. You need to be above 20% state of charge and you need to have manually added the charging station to the in-car native app. I mean, just so many restrictions. The Koreans built such a great product from a hardware standpoint. And, and this is really letting it down. Now, it may sound to some of you who don't have an Ionic 5, by the way, that, you know, preconditioning, not that big of a deal. We have an e-tron, for example. The thing's got so much cobalt in the battery pack. It'll just charge fine in the cold. It doesn't even matter. These cars hate to charge in the cold. You'll plug in if you don't precondition or yo-yo the car at 30 kilowatts, 40 kilowatts, 60 kilowatts on a car that should be doing 240 kilowatts peak. So it's a massive difference. Zach, who took this car on a road trip just recently, you know, zero degrees out, minus five degrees out when he was going through Kansas, really cold. He said his 18 hour trip turned into an over 24 hour trip because he could barely get above 40 kilowatt charging. And he's like, Kyle, I was ripping on the car over and over and over. So he's really happy he has the update. Both he and I are concerned that 30 miles is not enough uh, distance to warm up the battery pack fast enough in cold, cold temperatures. Perhaps we have some cold weather coming up soon. If you want me to test that, I certainly will. But we're about, uh, I don't know, 10 miles away from the EA charger. Let's head over there. Don't really need to charge it. I just wanna see how warm it heats up the battery and how quickly, let's do it. Here we are cruising along nicely using the wonderful driver assistance system. You can see here, HDA is activated, automatic lane changes, so quiet. Even with the roof bars Zach has on this, you can see the battery inlet temperature isn't coming up. So I'm not sure if that's the correct item I should be using, but you can see we already have 12 degrees Celsius on the hottest part and 23 degrees Celsius on the coolant, and it's still increasing. So things are happening on the way. This is big news for Ionic owners. Really, really pleased. We have just arrived and it popped up that we arrived. As soon as it said we arrived, we lost the preconditioning. So let's see, in 10 minutes, about maybe, yeah, a little bit longer than 10 minutes, we were able to raise the battery temperature to 10 degrees Celsius minimum which is not so good. So maybe 30 minutes though in these temperatures, you know, just about freezing 33 degrees Fahrenheit outside, about one degree Celsius, maybe that would be enough for this uh, situation. What I'm gonna do is actually drive it around some more. So I'm gonna reselect the charging station, keep driving, and um, then of course we'll plug it in and see what kind of speeds we get. So I'm not yo-yoing the car, I'm driving completely normally. I've done this many times with Ionic 5 where when you don't precondition it, it just gets the worst charging speeds ever. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep driving around until it seems to stop warming up and then we'll plug it in the charger and see how it does. But I'm not driving it hard, I'm purposefully driving it gentle to not artificially heat up the battery pack with my driving. It is now about 20 minutes later. We're down to 48% state of charge. Just been driving around some of these industrial roads around these buildings. Nothing fast. I didn't want to get too much airflow under the battery. Cruising slowly, not yo-yoing it. I have everything turned off. Climate off, lights off. You can see we're using almost five kilowatts still, even though the coldest bit of our battery is 18 degrees Celsius. So it's still ripping. Uh, this battery inlet temperature definitely is not the correct metric, but this coolant um, circulating temperature, uh, 38 degrees Celsius. This makes sense to me. So this is what's flowing through the battery pack. That's why we've seen such a pretty rapid spike here. And uh, I would say this is working normally. What's really weird is there's no noise. Um, can't hear any pumps going. Can't hear any heating going. We still have the preconditioning icon on. I'm going to keep driving around. I've got to put the headlights back on. I was just looking to see how much energy we were still using. And I'll keep an eye out to see, um, you know, at what point it stops. And now I've just uh, stopped the car here because I noticed that the snowflake went to the zap icon again, and we have reached 21 degrees Celsius on the minimum, 29 on the high, and coolant temperature is 40. So we're not far away, only 1.3 miles from the EA station. We're at 47% state of charge, which this car still should be able to charge pretty fast. So let's go try it out and see if we get good speeds. I imagine we should. So let's head over to the EA station, plug this thing in, See how well it charges now. 
and here I am rolling up to the station, but now it's full. This is like when the battery's warm and we want to try it out. So we'll just wait over here for someone to finish up and uh, <laughs> we'll be the first one to snag a spot. Let's just hope it's one of the 350 kilowatt units because I really don't want to do, I know the guy in the EV6, that's one of our friends actually. So we'll just wait right here. So this here is my friend's EV6 and the car sat outside, but he did quite a bit of driving and you can see here he's getting 77 kilowatts. The reason I'm bringing up this car is it's actually the same battery as to what's in the Ionic 5. So a little bit lower state of charge. Let's just peek at this Ionic 5 over here. 47 kilowatts. This is what I'm talking about. No battery preconditioning. These cars should be doing over 200 kilowatts at this state of charge. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Ionic 5 will do now that it's got the real super toasty battery pack. Hopefully someone's done soon. We can throw it on the charger and we'll see what happens. So we just unplugged the EV6 and I just uh, plugged in the Ionic 5 here. Again, let's see what happens. This is going to be so interesting to see the power difference. So he was getting 77 kilowatts. The other Ionic 5 was only getting 44 kilowatts. Again, this is just rolling up with a preconditioned battery, 21 degrees Celsius. Car sat for probably three minutes, four minutes, something like that before we got it plugged in. Had to help an ID4 owner get charging because the app is too complicated. So here we go, 11, 26. <laughs> Come on, baby, 45, already more than the other Ionic. 68, holy smokes, 83, are you kidding me? 114, man, this update is worth everything. I really think it's clunky to activate, but look at that, we are talking big boy speeds right now. Look at that, 200 kilowatts almost. Meanwhile, that same, same car right there is doing 44, and this is doing just about 200 kilowatts. So really a wonderful, wonderful update here. Um, really, I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts in a bit, but there you go, side by side, we got 196, almost 200 kilowatts on plug-in, and it will even warm up more at a higher state of charge. Meanwhile, this other Ionic 5, we're at 48%. They're almost at the same. They're doing 49 kilowatts right there. So what a difference preconditioning makes. Nice work, Hyundai. Finally releasing it to the cars. And well, what a freaking difference that makes. So let's really wrap up the whole experience. I also want to say a huge shout out to my friend in his EV6 here. Um, he's actually, we've seen his car in other YouTube videos great that you know making youtube videos we get to meet all the nerdy electric car owners so even though the station was full he and i agreed we're like let's not let the battery get too cold unplug the ev6 we slapped this in got right up to 200 kilowatts really impressive even at such a high state of charge because the higher the state of charge the warmer you actually need your battery to be to sustain high charging speed so really good logic here and then of course we plugged back in the ev6 i'm not charging anymore but there you go. So let's start with the first. You have to bring your car into a dealership to get an update. When, what, you know, century are we living in? Crazy. I think I've heard some dealers actually charging for the update. I don't believe Zach paid anything. I think it was a free update, part of a technical service bulletin. Then you, you get bricked eco mode. <laughs> you cannot drive the car in eco mode. But then it's also really hard to activate preconditioning. You have to go in, find the charger, select it, wait a couple minutes, wait for the thing to pop up. But once you get the snowflake on your battery icon, the magic starts. It rips the battery heater so silent. You don't hear the pumps really shows you how well engineered these cars are. And then, you know, you're pulling into the charger and getting max speed. The Ionic 5, two cars over, still doing 45 kilowatts. The EV6 still doing 72, 77 kilowatts, 74 kilowatts. This thing right up to 200. I mean, I don't care how clunky it is. That's worth the update, folks. That will save you so much time at chargers. And really, this car's Achilles heel has always been in cold gating. Now, pretty much solved. So I'd like to do some more testing with it. Let me know what you want to do. Big shout out to the Ionic guy on YouTube. Uh, we've actually, I filmed his car before as well. And uh, really uh, props to him for teaching me how to set all this up so I can show you. And uh, there you go. Ionic 5 preconditioning, really clunky, but it works really well. Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.